Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Kim Jong-un just called Trump a dotard again for a new, even dumber reason. Democratic President Barack Obama and his White House predecessors all took a fearful, ineffectual approach toward North Korea, sitting idly by while the millions of North Korean citizens were oppressed by their dictator leaders. Thankfully, President Trump has the fortitude to finally challenge this dictatorship, which is now run by Kim Jong-il's son Kim Jong-un. Finally under Trump. Americans is showing some real strength in the world toward our enemies, just like we did back in World War II. Obviously, Trump's confrontational approach has not been sitting well with Kim Jong-un, who had grown used to the hands-off treatment he got from passive Obama. Kim recently called Trump his never-used Shakespearean term of a dotard after the president announced that he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and had decided to move our U.S. embassy in Israel there. Said Kim Jong-un in response to President Trump's decision, likely fearful that he could also get meddled fault with, I'd like to advise Trump to exercise prudence in selecting words and to be considerate of whom he speaks to when making a speech in front of the world. The mentally deranged behavior of the U.S. president openly expressing on the U.N. arena the unethical will to totally destroy a sovereign state, beyond the boundary of threats of regime change or overturn of social system makes even those with normal thinking faculty think about discretion and composure. He added, action is the best option in treating the dotard who, hard of hearing, is uttering only what he wants to say. As a man representing the DPRK and on behalf of the dignity and honor of my state and people and on my own, I will make the man holding the prerogative of the supreme command in the U.S. pay dearly for his speech calling for totally destroying the DPRK. Kim concluded. Whatever Trump might have expected, he will face results beyond his expectation. I will surely and definitely tame the mentally deranged U.S. dotard with fire. Are you glad Trump is making this idiot scared? Checkmate Trump just won a huge victory over CNN and exposed the one thing that will ruin them for good. Believe it or not, but CNN's never-ending, criminally biased witch hunt of President Trump will finally be coming to an end. CNN executives have officially and explicitly directed their investigative team to stop looking into any and all potential ties between the Trump administration and Russia. This, of course falls in line with the series of high-profile reporting errors that led to the resignation of three journalists in June. But CNN really crossed the line with a desperate attempt to connect former Trump adviser Anthony Scaramucci to a Russian investment bank under Senate sanctions. This outlandish report was eventually removed from CNN's website after the network admitted it could not stand by the information. CNN's president, Jeff Friesacher, led an investigation into why the story was released and found the Pulitzer finalist Thomas Frank had published the accusations against the advice of CNN's legal team. The investigation also revealed that key aspects of Frank's reporting were based on a single source. That source, however, was far from concrete and offered undependable information, a fact Frank purposely kept from his colleagues. It is a huge relief to have this ridiculous witch hunt finally put to bed. The question now is will CNN accept defeat and leave President Trump alone to do his job? I'd hope so, especially since our Commander-in-Chief predicted this would happen since the beginning. He has always criticized CNN for offering biased coverage, and little more biased than changing facts to support your own personal narrative. Even the network admitted the piece did not meet CNN's editorial standards. Hopefully this massive victory will be a lesson for the rest of biased media. President Trump is here to do a job and no amount of unfounded lying will stop the train. This country needs people who will print the truth, despite any personal feelings attached to a story. The American people deserve it and so does our president. Let's share this huge win with the world so real Americans can stand up and cheer. Sources, DailyCaller.com
Right before going to bed Trump made one final DACA decision that will petrify Congress. If there is one thing that every American can agree on it's that President Trump sure knows how to make an exit. Just last night, right before he went to bed, he put out one final message that changed everything that happened with DACA today. Some people are gonna try to say this is Trump flipping on an issue, but that could not be further from the truth. He has always supported the people in DACA, just not the program. President Trump wants it done right by Congress. However, he will do what is necessary if Congress fails to actually accomplish anything on this major issue like the love to do. The real issue with DACA is that it's just a watered-down version of the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act is the constitutional version that Congress needs to pass that will grant them far better rights than DACA ever could. So, just like the president promised, he is acting with heart towards the dreamers. Early yesterday he even released a statement saying, As I've said before, we will resolve the DACA issue with heart and compassion, but through the lawful democratic process. Trump has made it very clear that he wants to see them succeed, but as Americans and not second-class citizens. Now it is up to Congress to make that happen. What Hillary Clinton just did to Bernie Sanders will ruin the Dems in 2020. Just when the Democrats think they are on the right path, Hillary Clinton marches back in and is what she always does. Screw it all up. Now, for God knows what reason, she has chosen to go after Bernie Sanders almost a full year after the Democrat primaries. But honestly, y'all, that's not even the best part. She actually blamed Bernie for the nickname Crooked Hillary. Seriously, you cannot make this kind of stuff up if you tried. In a promotion for her crazy new book about losing the election, Hillary said, when I finally challenged Bernie during a debate to name a single time I changed a position or vote because of a financial contribution he couldn't come up with anything, Clinton noted. Nonetheless, his attacks caused lasting damage, making it harder to unify progressives in the general election and paving the way for Trump's crooked Hillary. But the kooky old lady didn't stop there. Clearly, she wants to see the Democrats torn entirely in half. How else can anyone explain her saying that Bernie's only goal was to ruin the Democrat Party? I appreciated that he campaigned for me in the general election, but he isn't a Democrat, that's not a smear, that's what he says," Clinton continued. He didn't get into the race to make sure a Democrat won the White House, he got in to disrupt the Democratic Party. Look, I just gotta say it. The real reason she hated Bernie Sanders was not his disruption. It was because he challenged her assumed presidency. Honestly, I feel like we all owe Hillary a big thank you after this. She said her piece, let's help her share it out to all Republicans and, soon to be former, Democrats and let them you all see what the Democrat Party has become. Dems make dumb smear about Trump Jr., Gowdy just hit back at them twice as hard, ouch. It is standard practice during political campaigns, even during high school, for one side to conduct opposition research on the other side so they can know how best to appeal to voters and beat them. Somehow, however, liberals who are grasping for straws are now claiming that first son Donald Trump Jr. violated laws by performing opposition research on Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton in support of his father who was the Republican nominee. Thankfully, Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy poured cold water on liberals for this new smear. Rep. Gowdy went on Fox and Friends to give his take on the meeting that Trump Jr. had with a Russian lawyer who had opposition research on Clinton to share with him. When asked if there was anything wrong with this, Trey replied, No, I don't even think he did anything improper. Differing minds can quibble about whether you should accept an offer to provide oppo research. He then hit back with a fact that should quickly put an end to anti-Trump figures argument. Said Trey, Keep in mind the DNC was paying $10 million to do oppo research on Trump commented Gowdy about top-level FBI officials who have been helping Robert Mueller. The higher-ups have had a really bad two years, 
and said they're the ones whose reputations are under assault, not the line agents. He added, Congress should not have to fight with the FBI to access information that we're entitled to. We should not have to threaten contempt of Congress. I want the information we are entitled to to be able to do our jobs. Are you glad Trey destroyed the Democrats' latest fake news story? MSNBC host mocks Christian beliefs as fake, says they're like something out of a novel. Liberals wonder why America's Christians consistently decided to vote for Republican candidates over Democratic candidates. They somehow fail to realize how badly they alienate religious conservatives from the left when they consistently mock them in the media. In a recent, particularly nasty example of this, left-wing MSNBC host Joy Reid compared the beliefs of Christians to something out of a novel. Said Joy heard her guest, an ex-evangelical named Frank Schaefer, that sounds like something out of a novel. Is it true that there are people who really believe that having Israel unified under, I mean having Jerusalem unified under total Israeli control will bring on the end times? Joy's now liberal guest responded, Why yes Joy? You know I come from a fundamentalist evangelical background and I grew up in the 50s and 60s, I'm 65, and when I was a child this was the gospel in times version of reality that my parents believe in and many other evangelicals. He added, essentially, when you look at this, it was nothing to do with the Middle East or peace, or Palestinian rights or any of the difficulties that have represented themselves to responsible American political leaders or world leaders. The ex-evangelical concluded, this was all about what we're so familiar with, with Donald Trump and his nepotistic plan, throwing a little red meat to supporters and to big donors. Are you disgusted with the disrespect the left-wing media shows to devout Christians?